early exchange, shaping policy, advancing development. The World Trade Organization had a brainstorming session recently and pointed attention to the need to strengthen service trade globally. The service trade, according to statistics, contributed about 67% to the global GDP. And also for mention was the need to encourage the participation of least developed countries as far as service trade is concerned and also highlighting some of the challenges. Well, the questions are, what should be done to encourage least developed countries to participate in service trade and to also ensure that the essence of having this kind of facilitation is being promoted and strengthened? Let's begin our business of shipping policy in this regard by bringing in our special guest. We're being joined by Dr. Oyelami Lukman Oyeninka, who is a senior lecturer, uh, Economics Unit, Distance Learning Institute of the University of Lagos. Dr. Oyeninka, glad you have you join us on LX Thing this morning. Yeah. Good to see you again. It, it, it's my pleasure to be here this morning, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity. And uh, it is very interesting to be discussing the issue pertaining to trading services at this point in time, because it speaks to the number of many developing countries. Okay, Dr. Inka, I hope you can hear me. Um, okay, let me put the first question to you, which is for us to... Uh, provide a background to this so that our viewers could understand the context of this conversation. Recently, the World Trade Organization had a brainstorming session, uh, precisely that was on July 1st, whereby the conversation came as a result of trade services, the need to strengthen that and to constantly have discussions as we guess how to encourage the participation of least developed countries. Now, what do you think is fueling these recent concerns and even conversations and discussions as we got service trade among the World Trade Organization members? Sorry for the... I hope you can hear me, Dr. Yes, Oringa. I can hear you now. I can, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. All right, please go ahead if you can hear me. Yes, yes, I can hear you now. What basically happened is that uh, the contributions of developing and the least developed countries to global trading service is very is very small and there is need because the trade service play a very important role it generates jobs it's in most cases it generates direct jobs unlike trading in, in, in goods and services trading services involve human activities a whole lot and if country the least developed country basically contributes less than one percent that is it's grossly inadequate. That means there is need to provide an improved platform, institutional platform for the least developed country to get more involved in global trading services. And that is part of the mandate of the ministerial conference, of uh, which is the highest uh, organ of uh, WTO, you know, at their meeting February this year. And that instruction was actually handed down to the Council in Trading Services, which we usually call a uh, Service Council to see to the repositioning of least developed countries and developing countries as well to be able to play a very important role in trading services. And many of these this least developed countries are in Africa. We have 33 of them in Africa. And that shows that Africa is not, is not performing optimally. when it comes to trading goods and now apart from the general trading goods assignment which is basically based on the the mode of delivery when it comes to mode of delivery we are not doing very well as well and uh, what we emphasize more when it comes to mode of delivery in this present time is digitally delivered services currently digitally de de delivered services africa contributes we mean when you say digitally delivered services we mean you know the services that require the use of ict technology to get them delivered such as uh, such as mobile service such as uh, online e-commerce online trading activities providing transportation also is part of the key services but when it's come to digitally delivered services we are not doing very well we are currently doing less than uh, 1.8 percent of the global digitally delivered services and which means that uh, there's a big room for improvement 
we can actually use it to create more jobs for our people. And we also need to look at uh, what we do in terms of our financial services. This is a huge area we can actually explore. Currently, we are not doing fantastic when it comes to, we contribute to very less than 2% of global financial services currently. And that means we can use this platform to create jobs. And uh, when you, just like your trading goods and services, services also import, you know, includes import component and export component. We import more services, especially in the area of transportation. We import a very good services in Africa and many other less developed countries. You know, when it comes in, in that area, when you import more services, that means you, if you invest more in your shipping lines, you can actually provide more transportation services. You invest more in your financial services, building serious and, and very rigorous, uh, strong financial institutions who can be a global player in financial services. You can attract more of that global service uh, global services in financial sector to your country and to your continent and that's we actually create more jobs and to provide more employment for people in this industry and a lot of factors have been advanced in the literature to be responsible for you know for improvement in trading services institutional qualities institutional quality is very key if you have strong institutions that can provide platform that can bring about serious regulation of service Visions. All of this can actually contribute immensely to your ability to deliver trade in, uh, in services. And uh, when you are talking of institutional quality, we also have to provide platform for professional development. Most of services, especially if you want to play at the global level, you have to pro produce highly professional highly professional people, a global player, let's say international lawyer, for instance, you have to be well-read, you have to be fast, you have to be well-known before people can reach out for your service at a global level. Meaning that uh, we have to invest in people, we have to invest in our professionals, and we have to you know, provide necessary platform for them to be able to be a global player. And we can also look at our tourism. We can provide, if we can actually... So, Dr. Inka, before we get to the solution, uh, before you prefer the solution, I would prefer we get to the root of the problem first. You know, um, okay. you're aware that the World Trade Organization has about um, 35 members who are being classified as least developed countries. Now, no, 45, I would like to talk 45, about the yeah, 45, peculiarities 45. of these countries and what are some of the peculiarities of their challenges, you know, that have made them to be of disadvantage when it comes to service trade? Because I would like us to identify the problems first before we talk about solutions. So let's okay. identify okay. these okay. problems in terms of technology, infrastructure, policy. What are these problems? Yeah, yeah. And why do you yes, think, yes, as yes, large yes. as the number, you know, is, you have about 35 of them. Why do you think their participation in 45, service trade 45, has 45. been very low? Okay, we have 45 of them, not 35. 35 of them, they, uh, when you look at them in their composition, we have Southern Sudan, Sudan, Somalia, and all of that. Most of these countries, they are war, most of them are war torn country, and those that are not war country, they have crisis of governance. You know, they are not set to when it comes to governance, no stable government, and they are not doing very well when you come to, when you look at their per capita income as well. That tells you that many of these countries, they are, you know, they are not doing well economically. They have a very low per capita income. And we cannot really say that, uh, you know, their problem, though the major problem of many economy instability in any country stem from governance. When you don't have a stable government, it dovetails, it spills into, into economic crisis as well. Many of these countries, they are war tons and they do not have institutional quality that can provide the necessary, you know, uh, environment for, for trading services to thrive. And many of these countries as well, they do not have su sufficient FDI, foreign direct investment, that can actually serve as a springboard for development in the area of trade in services. And many of them do have, you know, they don't have enough higher institutions that can bring about high quality human services. And, you know, they do not have sufficient professionals who can actually be a global, a global player, you know, when it's come to rendering services across the globe and many of these countries as well apart from the fact that apart from all of these problems have highlighted you know the opportunity for for for, for women to actually get involved because involving women in your trading services also go a long way because in most cases 
most of the top professionals, when you look at across the globe now, most of them are women. They do not give their cultural parties that hinder the involvement of women in their, you know, in, in their economic activities. And this has actually have this also have you know, you know, played very serious a negative role when it comes to uh, trading services. These are problems, these are peculiarities of many of these countries. Some of them even have a huge population, like you know, like any or, any or, any of the developed countries. But this huge population has not been able to 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 take advantage they do not have enough institutional advantage to create you know uh, a productive human activities that can deserve uh, serious attention at the global level and when it's come to involvement in, in international and they do not have serious when you look at their financial sector the financial sector is the backbone of of, of any economy financial sector requires huge investment in service in service related activities like transportation like tourism and all of that many of them do not have a very strong financial activities and when you look at the financial inclusions in many of these countries it's very low and these are peculiarities of these countries and this has to a reasonable extent have hindered them to get actively involved in, uh, in, in trading services okay before we get to the specifics of what uh, the world trade organization needs to do to encourage these L L uh, these uh, least developed countries uh, let's look at the present framework for the GATS, which is the General Agreement on Tr Trading Services. There are some experts who have argued that there's a need for review, that it's outdated, and there's a need for it to be rejected to accommodate the percent of the mother day challenges as regards trade services. What's your thoughts on this? Yes, I, I, I quite agree with that proposition. There's need to reinvigorate the current uh, uh, restructure. Let me use the word restructure, which is a popular slogan in Nigeria. The current arrangement of WTO in such a way that uh, we can have, we can accommodate the least developed and developing countries as well. The current structure as it is, you know, there are some, though in recent time, WTO is coming out with some exemption for least developed countries, like uh, least develop, uh, most of the least developed countries. And one of these exemptions is the exemption from the uh, most favored nations in such a way that uh, it's that if they are exempted from most favored nations, many of these developed countries or least developed countries, they can, pra they can practice a discriminatory trade when it comes to trading services so that it can it, it will encourage them to get more involved in services. These are some of the recent uh, development in WTO to create room for for late developed country and besides in their involvement should actually go beyond paper paper most of these developed country they should individually most of these member some member country of wto should provide a platform for the least developed countries and some developing country to get more involved to encourage them in form of like a big brother encourage them to get more involved in trading services, hire their professionals, no matter how it is, create some kind of bilateral agreements between developed countries and developing countries and lead developed countries in such a way that uh, the trading services in many of these developed countries can be, can be improved. Hire their insurance, though, you know, when it comes to business, most of this global, at the global level, business is business and it's treated strictly. You are going to get... You are going to go where you are going to get the best of services. Many of these developing countries might not be able to provide the best of services when it comes to insurance, when it comes to financial services, and when it comes to transportation. But as 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 the case may be, we should provide platform for them to you know to be encouraged. Apart from the general uh, uh, institutional arrangement at the WTO, there should be a deliberate effort on the part of many developed countries to engage the services from these developed countries. So that they can actually get involved and you know at the global level okay now let's look at the kind of technological innovation that should also take place or if i may use your word uh, restructuring the technological restructuring that should take place you are aware of the role uh, ict played as the first straight seven yeah yeah, yeah. Services, of yeah. that now for that to be strengthened don't you think it's also necessary so look at the framework guiding the present agreement to be able to accommodate the new trends as it has technological structure. So I would like you to shed more light on the aspect of technology or ICT as it has the role it plays in uh, global trade. Yeah, yes, technology, you know, I use a particular term. I, I, I'm not sure whether you are, 
in, in classification of trading services, trading services has been classified based on delivery, the mode of delivery. We have a technologically deliver, or they call it digitally deliver services. In digitally deliver services, you cannot do well if you don't have a substantial investment in ICT. In you know, and as part of the effort of WTO to guarantee this, there is a moratorium on importation of ICT-related goods in many, you know, from 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 developed country to developing country. That means that if you are importing ICT-related commodity into country like uh, you are importing from I, uh, from US to Nigeria, you are not going to pay, you know, a, a full tariff. It's a way of encouraging the developing country and the least developing country to have access to technological equipment that is required to perform very well at when it comes to dig digitally deliver services. And there was a research we carried out recently in conjunction with private organizations in US. We were able to establish that the encouragement of this uh, the mor this moratorium has encouraged many SME in developed and least developed countries to get involved in e-commerce, like Conga, uh, like many of the Congas e-commerce activities of you know many of the home delivery services being offered by many SME in developed countries. This moratorium has been able to contribute substantially to the service delivery in this area. And uh, what we actually did is that we look at this moratorium for a period of ten years and see what 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 quantity of uh, digitally related commodities they've been able to import and how this thing has impacted on the service delivery and productivities of many SME in, in developing countries. And we're able to establish substantially that no country can actually perform very well when it comes to trading services without a strong digital platform and without a strong investment in digital platform. And there's no way you can actually do well. There's no way you can actually perform very well in this area if you don't have a very good investment. And many of these developing countries and least developed countries, they do not have the initial capital outlay, good initial capital outlay that it is required to be deployed to provide this platform. They still rely on foreign direct investment from developed countries to catap you know, to catalyze uh, you know, many of these uh, digital ideas they, they, they have, you know, to make them to, to you know, to see them to fusions and it is very is very is very key for developed countries to really form a partnership in many of these developing countries to uh, you know all developing country design a policy that is attractive to the develop to to attract investment huge investment that is required from many of these developed countries to 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 their country so that they can have you know enough capital and enough investment in initial capital outlay required in in, uh, in 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 digital in digital world that we find ourselves today, and this will actually prepare them, you know, provide the necessary platform for them to thrive when it's come to uh, deliver uh, digitally deliver uh, digitally deliver the trading services. That is the way to go. They should attract foreign direct investment. They should you know look inward and gather resources, mobilize resources to invest which you know which amount of money in the digital platform so that we can create an enabling environment. For SME, you know, many of the SME they rely on that because government cannot do it directly, but they just have to provide the necessary platform from the private sector to thrive in this area, so that we can boost our involvement in trading uh, in services in many of the developing countries. All right, I, 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 a follow up to your question, I like the fact that you identified the role of ICT in this kind of digital services. But you agree with me that this leaves developed countries uh, who don't have the means. Of course, you provided uh, a way yes, that they yes, can yes. partner with developed countries to have a, an attracting package for investment. But what do you think should be the role of World Trade Organization in these? There are some experts who have also advocated for the need for waivers and consideration for these least developed countries. What's your take on this? Yes, I, I made mention of moratorium that the WTO has deployed. That uh, if you are imp if you are getting digitally dig uh, digitally related commodities to developed countries and developed countries, you are not going to pay tariffs. Those are policy. That's the initiative of the of, of the, and this has been on for almost ten years. And they were contemplating at a point whether to stop it or not. But based on the research other people in you know, people have done and uh, we we are done. 
And we also, I did a similar thing with some other people in Nigeria as well. We were able to conclude that they should continue. We advise that they should continue. And WTO has advised, you know, as 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 made policy to that effect that they are going to continue such a moratorium. That's one of those policies. That's one of those way through which um, you know digitally require uh, related uh, ICT related goods can be can be easily imported into the least developed countries so that they can actually do better when it comes to trading services. There are policy in place, and apart from that, they also uh you know uh, there's some of the policy specific policy you know when you look at wto generally they can you know, as i said earlier in most cases they can provide the policy guidance it's up to many countries it's up to country to adopt or to to not to adopt in most cases there's also liberty to which wto uh, there's there's also a limit to the extent to which wto can uh, impose some of this uh, policy on developed countries because they are big brothers they just want to you know, want to to come to them, beg if possible, or provide the enabling environment, or they give you some conditions to before they can make those tools available, or because or before they can provide those platforms for you for you to try. That's what we we've seen in the global trade. But as as on the part of WTO, they have a moratorium if encourage member countries to give to developed country and the least developed country so that they can get necessary equipment when it comes to ICT or digital platform into their countries. For them to be active or to be to to, to upgrade their involvement in uh, digital uh, in, in trading goods and services. At the last uh, brainstorming session that was held by the World Trade Organization, some of the concerns that were raised about e-commerce has to do with uh, the issue of cyber security and the issue of data flow and also privacy. What's your take on this kind of concerns and how can they be handled in a way to ensure that the issue of e-commerce, which is the rave of the moment, is the trend now, can be handled without any form of fear or prejudice? Yeah, that, that, is, uh, that is a very interesting question. You know, whatever has an advantage, we also come with, uh, with its own disadvantage. You know, we are in the digital world. We can't do without... Uh, you know, we can hardly do any serious uh, global business without uh, without computer, without internet, and the like. And the risk that uh, comes with this is cyber security. It's a major challenge to global trade, and uh, and especially trading services, goods and services, because uh, you have to use internet and uh, you know ICT related equipment to digitally deliver many of your services. And the fear of cyber security is. Uh, it's very it's real because several scam emails, several organizations have been duped, several fake emails and sort of that have been, you know, a lot of people that have been swindled, you know, in, in, in international trade when, you know, because of uh, their negligence or because of uh, being as smart, being as smart by, 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 by other ICT uh, negative people. What we can actually do is that we really have to invest more in cyber security and we have to create serious awareness. We have to build capacity in this area. And currently now, many of developing countries, they are not doing very well. And, uh, you know, we have to make a serious investment, serious investment in terms of uh, producing IT uh, cyber security experts that uh, every organization will require to every serious organization that is producing or that is uh, offering services, digitally de deliver services, need to, or should realize the need to have a, a, a cyber security expert who will actually see to the transaction and check the, their status at every point in time and see that they are, you know, they are protected when it comes to cyber attacks and the like. Um, many developing countries, we just have to brace up. Even the developed country, we still have cyber security attack because as the Rubai people will say, the bigger the head, the bigger the head, the, the bigger the economy, the developed the economy, and the sophisticated the ICT in an economy, the more sophisticated the cyber attack that is that is likely to happen. Though the the many developed countries they are investing more in, in cyber security, unlike uh, many uh, unlike under uh, at least developed countries or developing countries, we just need to involve you know more get create serious awareness, especially for small SME and uh, the big SME. Uh, the big companies within the the the, the, the uh, trading service space that the cyber security is real and they just have to invest seriously getting experts that can provide the necessary service for them to, to to be protected that is the way to go we just we can't say because of that 
will resent when it comes to digitally deliver services. You just have to get protected, provide, you know, get the service of uh, people who can actually give us uh, uh, adequate protections in, in, our, in our area of operations. That is what we can do about it. Now, let's get to proper solutions now to these issues. Let's identify the issue of trade barriers, which coexist as a result of uh, trading services. Now, what kind of transparency framework or trade regulation would you expect to be put in place to eliminate the trade barriers that has to do with trading services? Yeah, the, the trading in services, at the center of trading services is a migration of people. Is a migration of people. What we, I mean by migration of people is that many services require the physical presence of those people that want to deliver the services. And the policy about migration should be liberalized. There should be serious liberalizations when it comes to migration of people. People should allow, like, let me give you, you know, like Dagote uh, boldly referred to in one of his presentations that it will require 33 visa to move around the African country. Assuming as a lawyer, I want to move from Nigeria, I want to go to Ghana, I want to go, go to Gambia, other you know, West African country, or even I have to procure officers and, you know, before I can do that and all of that. Liberalizing the mode of uh, movement of people across the globe, we go a long way, you know, encouraging people to, you know, to, to provide their services without any hindrances. And the major barrier to trading services is the migration of people. If people are allowed to migrate from one place to another to render their services and the certifications from a lawyer in Nigeria, I want to go to UK, I have to go through a certification process again, though there are quality assurance procedure, but nevertheless, those terms should be liberalized. And they all because liberalization of those terms will go a long way, adding value to, to trading services. All right. What other critical areas do you think the World Trade Organization need to focus on as regards to addressing uh, the challenges associated with trade in services? Most importantly, putting into play the plight of least developed countries. What other areas do you think the World Trade Organization needs to pay more attention to? Yes. What what I, I what I consider is as a policy is something that has I've always been thinking about is that uh, there could be a kind of uh, quota, a quota system when it comes to trading services. Quota system is such a way that uh, for every trade transaction that takes place between developed and developing country, it, 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 there should be, there, there can be a kind of quota. Trading services, you know, every movement of goods and services involve, you know, uh, people. There should be a quota, maybe the service related, let's say insurance transportations, if it is going to be, let's say 100%, the developed country or the least developed country must contribute at least 10 percent in services this will compare many of these developed countries to engage the services from the least developed country it's a kind of quota system that that require the least developed country and developing country to be involved by a way of regulations you are this is a trade transactions the, the service involved in tra these trade activities include like let's say one billion or a one billion dollars maybe a 10 or 10 million or let's say 10 million dollars of this trade transaction, the services related to this must be provided by the developing countries. It's kind of a quota system. They can introduce it to you know to to encourage the developing countries and the little countries to get more involved in trading services, and that will go a long way in provide you know improving the institutions in many of these developing countries to 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 get prepared. If they are prepared, they, they know that uh, if they get more patronage, that will bring about uh, improved in investment in their, in, their, in their capacity and they'll be able to deliver that at, at the global stage. That is, that's, that's what I, that's my thought. That's my own personal thought. But I think WTO can actually key into this, introduce a quota system that will encourage uh, developed and the least developed country to get more involved in, in trade services. That's interesting. We just have to leave the conversation on trade services there. Now, let's get to the collaboration between the Africa Development Bank and Korea Customs Service as regards the aid memoir that was signed recently to which the essence of that is to boost uh, trade facilitation in Africa. Talk to us. Why do you think this partnership is significant and relevant? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a very, it's a 
But my assessment is a, is a step in the right direction for African Development Bank to do that. Because in this era of uh, increasing trade, you have to upgrade your facilities, you know, in terms of digitalization of your custom administration process or custom administration system in such a way that uh, it provides opportunity for quick movement of goods and services. And you cannot do this in this modern era without having a, without, without modernizing or introduce or deploy I, uh, ICT related or digital equipment to the way you process, you, you administer your, your, your activities at, at, at the port. And at, this, at the act of this is the custom administration system. You know, how do you as in, how do we use digital platform to confirm your rule of origin? And all of these, they are part of things that cause delay and uh, and disturbance at the port. How can you digitally deliver many of these services that uh, we have at the port in such a way that uh, the movement of goods can be fast tracked? There's need for, for African countries to do this because uh, Korean people, South Korea specifically, they've, they've gone far when it's come to, to modernization of their custom uh, system, uh, administration system. And we have so much to learn from them. And this kind of uh, collaboration will actually bring about uh, an improved, uh, we are going to expose our officers, custom officers across African country to modern day technology, to digitally process uh, the commodities and you know, at the port. And this will go a long way in fulfilling their productivities. Uh, with this kind of partnership, why do you think the African development is, uh, if I may put that word, is doing what I call uh, a case study for that of Korea Customs Service? And what are the comparative advantages that Korea Customs Service has? And how can African nations benefit from this kind of partnership? Maybe in terms of technology, expertise, and the right skills to drive this kind of partnership. Yeah, Korea, when, when you look at uh, South Korea, it's a success story of Asian Tiger. They, they, they've done very well when it's come to international trade. In fact, the current development we have there can be largely associated to trade because they produce all sorts of automobiles and all sorts of, uh, you know, that we never thought it could be possible for an Asian country to do. And uh, there's a lot, there's what we actually allude to in, in, in trade theory that... Uh, when you say a, 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 a comparative advantage, there's there's what we call latent comparative advantage. We never thought many of these Korean or Asian tiger could develop capacity to get involved in capital intensive commodities. And they are doing fantastically well in that area. We have so much to learn. How are they processing this good to the outside world? When you look at everywhere in Africa, you see care, you see most of their products in our how are they processing it? How are they exporting it? We have so much to learn. And in the area of capacity building, we can actually have our officers, custom officers in many developed uh, in many African countries to go there and observe things. And they can also come here, introduce us to several digital platform that they use to, to process their commodity. And uh, we have so much to, to gain and uh, they can actually help us to build capacity of our officers. Uh, and uh, we can also get exposed to way of doing things over there. We are not saying they are superior to us, but they are more advanced to us in, in, when it comes to modernization of custom system because there is no way they will be turning out such which uh, uh, global commodities if they do not have uh, you know a custom administration system that is very efficient and very productive. We can actually gain a whole lot, lot from this uh, from the exploit when it comes to international trade and uh, custom administrative system. All okay. right. Let's be specific now about areas where you think this partnership should address, apart from the issue of technology, the issue of training. What other areas, as you guys, tariff system or tariff regime, and some other areas you think this kind of partnership oh, should also uh, address? What are these areas? I want you to identify them. But another area I think is that legal framework. There should be they, they can they have a very simple legal framework through which they they move their goods very closely. Our expert, we can also look at how we can improve our own legal framework or, if possible, imitate them where necessary. And, you know, legal framework has to do with the cultural diversity as well. We can actually look at how we can imbibe some of the culture that is working well for them. And we can also look at uh, an area of, uh, you know, uh, apart from technology, we can also look at an area of uh, 
uh, how, how do they assess there's what we call uh, uh origin uh certificate of origin how, how how are they able to assess their certificate of origin what's what constitutes the definition of their certificate of origins and all of this we have so much to learn from them to be specifically we can actually learn from them their their culture as well their culture of delivery of service delivery as well we we have so much to gain from them because they are doing with you know at, at, at the moment if you look at the state of most sea, most uh, seaports in Africa, they are, they, they are in, in a deplorable stage. Um, some of these uh, ports, when you look at technology, you know, they are obsolete. A good reference is that of Nigeria, where you hear often the issue of scanner breaking down. You are aware of the see about 24 hours cargo clearance, 48 hours cargo clearance, and yet People still resort to the manner way of clearance, physical examination, and all and all like that. What do you think are these strategic problems? In and how can this challenge or, or this uh, partnership be geared towards solving these problems? You know, you are aware of the custom. Some also talked about the presence of multiple agencies at the seaport, especially in Nigeria. In our papa in Tika, and you have several agencies which has also contributed to the bottleneck. How can this be improved with this kind of partnership coming on board between the AFDB and the Korea Custom Service? Yeah, we we really have to learn their own way of doing it. That's why I made reference to the legal framework. In in many of those countries, we, there is no over centralization of uh, custom uh, activities. Many of those, many of the ports in many of these Korean countries, they are even private owned. Apart from uh, most of the services provided in many of these, uh, they are privately provided, and that guarantees efficiency in many of these ports, the activities in this port, and this multiplicity of agency in port and all that. Most of this system can be synchronized into a single simple process in such a way that we are going to learn a whole lot of this because that's why I said. Their custom and their custom uh, and their, their their seaport activities is very is very very efficient and very effective. Why are they efficient? It can just be due to you know uh, you know in many African country we over centralize things. In Nigeria, for instance, that's why our volume of trade maybe we just have like two or three active uh, port or uh, uh, seaport and seaport. This port, this seaport, they have to get instruction from Abuja. Factually, everything that happened. To many of these seaports, they have to get instruction from the over, over centralization, over you know, extensive unnecessary bureaucracy in many of the activities in the port are creating serious bottleneck for international trade. And we can't compete globally if we maintain many of these systems. We just have to look for a way of uh, making this port efficient, reduce the over, uh, over centralization of uh, instructions. Instruction, you know, if possible, we can have some private individuals involved in many of these ports to make things work faster. We know that private sector in most cases to guarantee higher level of efficiency than public uh, than public uh, activities and we can actually achieve all of this if you can learn from the korean people not, not only in nigeria in many african countries as well we also have government get involved in many of these activities most of these activities can be privatized you can there can be a concessionary arrangement between the government and people that can better deliver many of these services we can actually understudy the Korean people and you know their level of productivity and efficiency in their seaport and try to replicate same in many of our ports, in many ports in Africa, and and see how we can improve our efficiency towards an improved uh, service delivery at the ports. Now, in terms of addressing skills gap and transfer of technology that could also uh, exist with this partnership. What would you expect from the African Development Bank, who is championing this kind of partnership, to be able to cater for this kind of special needs, especially in these African countries? Because the issue of skills gap and even knowledge transfer is also crucial. How would you expect that to be handled by the African Development Bank in a way that it will achieve the purpose intended? Yeah, I, I they can take it further. Apart from the normal... Uh, normal bilateral uh, exchange we can we can take it for that to a practical session in such a way that uh, some of the officers here will go to their to the korean uh, country to learn to understudy the activities there and when they come there should be expansion of that knowledge you know they should spread it across african countries and country 
you know along africa uh, in africa because to for you to even participate in current african development uh, african free trade Ar agreement to effective you need a very efficient and effective uh, seaport uh, services at, at, at your seaport we need to actually bring it home bring it home we don't have to, everything we don't have to end it on paper we have to bring it home introduce some practical approach to this uh, bilateral agreement let them go there understudy them and there should be willingness on part of the government in many african countries to get this thing replicated so that we don't there, sh there should be a mechanism through which african development bank can impress it on many government because you know, many of the bulk of these things still stop on the on the table of you know decision maker at the national level to replicate. You know, they still have they, they see they must be impressed to deliver this service. Uh, you know, for their people to in, in an attempt to, to improve trade across Africa and beyond. All right, let's let's wrap up this way. Uh, I like to localize this conversation so that it will be relevant to the present station here in Nigeria. Now, looking at this partnership that exists between AFDB and the Korea Customs Service, how do you think the Nigeria Customs Service can take advantage of this partnership? I don't like bringing this interesting dimension, but it's a reality that the AFDB, you know, president is in Nigeria. It's a reality. Yeah. Why do you think it's important, yeah, it's or how do you think the Nigerian Customs Service can take advantage of this partnership? Yes, I, as much as I will expect African development uh, country to be fair when it comes to selection of the officer that will participate in this country, you know, issue of bias and the likes, you know, having our own as as the president of African development country, we cannot underestimate. That cannot be underestimated. We will definitely want to see Nigerian being playing a leading role or a very active role, to, you know, as part of their preparing uh, preparedness to benefit from this uh, to to have a maximum advantage. From this partnership we should train as many of our senior officers and even possible junior officers so that you can have a cultural transmissions within within the rank and file of the custom so that this modernization of custom and and and, and the process within our seaport is, is is long overdue we cannot longer in most cases we have to provide you know a very good digital platform for many of our verification process so that uh, we can take a maximum advantage of this. We have a good resources. We should be playing, we should be doing better in terms of uh, our involvement in both trading goods and services at the global level. We can actually uh, take a, a advantage of this partnership to improve the quality of our custom uh, administration system to, 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 to take things further from where we are currently. All right, Dr. Yelami Oyeyinka, I must confess that it's always educating, you know, having this kind of conversation with you. And I must appreciate you for your thoughts. We just have to leave the conversation here. Let's hope, as you've said, that the Nigerian Customs Service can take ad advantage of this partnership and then the African Development Bank also do well in seeing how to boost trade facility in Africa. We must appreciate you for your time, your thoughts, and your, you know, your your submission as regards the subject we started looking at trading services and also looking at the partnership between the fdb and korea custom service dr yinka thank you so much for your time and your thought yeah the same here. thank you Exchange, shaping policy, advancing development.